Hi, I'm John Sterling, and this is Normalization for Cubicle Type Theory, joint work with Carlo and Julie. Cubicle Type Theory is an extension of Martin Luff's Intentional Type Theory, or ITT, by an interval. An interval consists of a new sort called I, by which the context can be extended. One has two constants, 0 and 1, of interval sort called the endpoints. Potentially, one can add further structures such as meets, joins, and an involution, as in the De Morgan variant of cubicle type theory. What is the purpose of cubicle type theory? It provides a new way to think about equality as figures of interval shape. To be specific, a proof of equality between two elements, A and B, is the same as a function, P, from the interval into the type, such that when it is applied to the left endpoint 0, it yields A, and when it is applied to the right endpoint 1, it yields B. This geometrical interpretation of equality has much better properties than equality in previous versions of type theory including both intentional type theory and extensional type theory. Like ETT, cubicle type theory supports function extensionality. Unlike extensional type theory, however, cubicle type theory supports an additional extensionality principle for the universe of types itself. In particular, two types are identified by cubicle equality exactly when they are equivalent or isomorphic in an appropriate sense. Type extensionality restricts to propositional extensionality, which has the important consequence that well-behaved or effective quotient types can be interpreted. Cubicle type theory is inspired by homotopy type theory, but unlike its forebear, cubicle type theory has good computational properties. In particular, if m is a closed n-cube of booleans, then either m is the true constant or m is the false constant. This property, called cubicle canonicity, was the first major syntactic metatheorem to be proved about cubicle type theory. Cubicle canonicity is itself a generalization of closed canonicity, which characterizes the equivalence classes of closed terms of a base type. A consequence of cubicle canonicity is that cubicle type theory can be used as a programming language, and we have multiple implementations already, such as cubicle agda, red tt, and cool TT. While cubicle canonicity is a significant syntactic result, it is unfortunately not pertinent to the implementation of cubicle type theory. This is because a type checker or an elaborator will almost never encounter a term that depends only on variables of interval sort. In fact, one must characterize the equivalence classes of terms in arbitrary contexts a result referred to as normalization. Canonicity and normalization are two points within a spectrum of computational results for type theories. Type theoretic notions of computation vary in a few important parameters. Which elements are we computing? What observations are we making about them? And in what contexts are we doing so? For canonicity, we consider only elements of base type, such as the natural numbers. On the other hand, when proving normalization, we must consider elements of arbitrary type. Likewise, a canonicity result observes the numeral that a particular element of the natural numbers type computes to, whereas a normalization result must observe the full beta eta normal form of an arbitrary element. Canonicity results compute only in restricted contexts, such as the empty context only for closed canonicity, or contexts that are powers of the interval for cubical canonicity. On the other hand, a normalization result must compute in arbitrary contexts. In addition to the question of what contexts observations are made in, we must also consider under what context substitutions those observations are stable. Consider the case of computing the normal form of a variable of type nat. We may restrict along the substitution that replaces the variable x with the ninth Fibonacci number. We do not, however, have a way to restrict the observation of the normal form of x along this substitution without performing an entirely new normalization. 
In contrast, we can restrict the existing normal form along a substitution of variables for variables. This is a special case of the fact that in intentional type theory, neutral observations, which are basically elimination forms that are blocked on variables, are closed under renaming, but not full substitution. Therefore, in each computational situation, one isolates a category of contexts and substitutions under which those observations are closed. In this case, that is the category of contexts and renamings. Then, computation occurs in the Artin gluing of the base change functor induced by the structure map from contexts and renamings into contexts and substitutions. This arrangement is sometimes referred to as Kripke logical relations, or Kripke relations of varying arity. Unfortunately, just removing the substitutions for which neutral observations are unstable is not possible for cubical type theory, unlike the case for ITT. The problem originates with the interval. Consider the case that we are working in the context of a proof P that the Fibonacci sequence is equal to itself, and an additional variable I of interval sort. Projecting the I face of the proof P, we obtain a function between the natural numbers, which, if we apply to the number 9, gives us a natural number. The normal form of this natural number is a neutral. We apply the variable p to the variable i and apply that to the ninth natural number. Consider restricting this observation along the substitution that replaces the variable i with the endpoint 0. Under this substitution, the term p at i applied to 9 becomes the term denoting the ninth Fibonacci number. However, without executing an entirely new normalization problem, it is not clear how to restrict our neutral form above to a normal form for the ninth Fibonacci number. Previously, we resolved this problem by simply removing the offending substitution. Unfortunately, we cannot remove the 0 for i and 1 for i substitutions from the category of context and renamings, because ultimately, we will need the interval to restrict to something representable in presheafs on the category of contexts and renamings. We therefore seem to have arrived at a contradiction. Neutrals do need to have a cubical substitution action. However, our observations above indicate that positive neutrality is not actually a cubical notion. Under the face maps 0 for i and 1 for i, a neutral observation can cease being neutral. However, we notice that the conditions under which a given neutral destabilizes are cubical. In particular, we may identify for any neutral form E a frontier of instability, or a condition under which it destabilizes. Variables are completely stable, hence their frontier of instability is empty. Ordinary elimination forms, like application and first projection, simply preserve the frontier of instability of their neutral arguments. Something new, however, occurs with path application. In addition to retaining the frontier of instability of the neutral argument, we glue onto it the boundary of the dimension to which it is being applied. Therefore, we may define an inductive family of neutrals with frontier of instability phi. Traditional neutrals, which are totally stable, are recovered in the case that phi is false. To model destabilization, we ensure that the projection map from everywhere unstable neutrals to equivalence classes of type terms is an isomorphism. Classically, neutral and normal forms are integrated into a Tate computability model for normalization by means of Tate's famous saturation yoga. In particular, a neutral form can be reflected into an element of the interpretation, which is called a computable element, and a computable element can be reified into a normal form. These reflection and reification maps must commute with the projection of equivalence classes of type terms. For example, the reification map must not take the true Boolean to the normal form of the false Boolean. We cannot directly apply Tate's yoga in the context of destabilization. Considering the case of a totally unstable neutral, the reflection map would then have to construct a computability datum out of thin air for an arbitrary equivalence class of typed terms. Doing so is exactly as strong as the normalization result that we are attempting to prove. Therefore, it seems unlikely that this closure condition would be satisfied by the types of cubical type theory. In order to sufficiently strengthen our induction hypothesis, we must include in the input to our reflection map 
in addition to an unstable neutral, a partial computability datum that is defined on that neutral's frontier of instability. We must moreover ensure that the partial computability datum is compatible with the neutral that it is glued onto, in the sense that they both restrict to the same underlying equivalence class of typed terms. This is achieved by taking a pullback that glues an unstable neutral form together with partial computability data along its frontier of instability. To develop a geometric intuition for the concept of stabilized neutrals, it is helpful to investigate how the collection of stabilized neutrals varies in frontiers of instability. When the frontier of instability is nowhere, the stabilized neutrals restrict to the conventional neutrals. On the other hand, when the frontier of instability is everywhere, the stabilized neutrals restrict to pure computability data. In this sense, stabilization can be seen to interpolate between neutrals and computability data. With our new notion of stabilized neutral in hand, it is now possible to refine the standard Tate yoga to the cubical setting. In addition to the existing compatibility condition that the underlying equivalence class of type terms is preserved by the reflection map, we must add an additional compatibility condition. The reflection of a stabilized neutral must restrict on its frontier of instability to the partial computability data that was glued onto it. All types are indeed closed under this stabilized Tate yoga, leading immediately to the normalization result for cubical type theory. In this paper, we have proved for univalent cubical type theory without universes the following results. Every type and every term has a unique normal form. Hence, judgmental equality of types and terms is decidable. Furthermore, type constructors such as pi and sigma are injective. A corollary of the foregoing results is that type checking is decidable. In subsequent work, Sterling has extended this result to cubical type theory with a countable hierarchy of univalent universes. Thank you for your interest and attention.